Well, you're back in Stockton. Mm-hmm. And now you start hanging out more. Yeah. And you have brothers. Yes. Link, Chris, and Rodney. You did your research. Yes. And they were kind of in a gang. Yeah. So now you kind of became part of this gang as well. See, I, people back home would say, oh, he was Southside Mob. That, that's what they would say. He, he was Southside Mob for sure. I was nev- never in a gang. I never got jumped into a gang. I never made a commitment of being in a gang. I was a part of my community. So my my brother Link was from, Link Jr. was from Southside Mob. My brother Rodney was from Lewis Park Piru. My other brothers, Chris and Christopher, were not in gangs, but they were just a, the family. So we're all in the family. But my family predominantly was Southside Mob. So the whole family, Southside Mob, huge family. And then my aunt and my, my father used to own a liquor store on the east side and my aunt bought it from him. So we had Pat's Liquors on the east side. So then my cousins from the east side were there. So we were kind of spread throughout the community except for north side. We weren't the north side Crips, we weren't, we weren't affiliated with them. But my brothers were heavily in the streets. Rodney was... I think Link was more heavily into the dope game on the South Side, and he had been shot a couple times, and he had been in the streets and been to prison a couple times. Rodney was in the streets from the dope side, the gangbang inside. The he had a lot of respect and a lot of revere in the streets. So I was affiliated with them, but everybody used to say, "Oh, he's from South Side South Mob," because I used to hang on the South Side. But that was really just where my family was, and uh, I guess being affiliated with them somehow, I got affiliated with that. Right. Well, with that affiliation. Um, you end up getting shot in a yes. drive-by. Yeah. Tell me about that. So um, I spent the night at my grandma's house. Um, so my grandmother, Maybell, she had moved from um, Mississippi with 12 kids and eventually had 15 children. And so we had a large family. And so we would all congregate. That was like grandma's house. We just go to grandma's house. So I spent the night there. Early in the morning, um, I wanted to go to a, a concert in Sacramento. So I told my brother, hey, can you give me a ride home? So Link picked me up. He said, before I take you home, we're going to go to the car wash. I got to wash my car. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's go wash the car. So we go wash the car. Uh, he had a Caprice Classic, which I always wanted one. By the way, I don't want a Caprice Classic or a 5.0 now, but I did. Uh, he's washing the car. And, uh, you know, the music's really loud, really, really loud. So I get out to say, hey, like, you know, are we leaving? Like, what's taking us so long? Because he's also talking to people. The people are hanging out at the car wash. And then we just heard this big bang. And the first bang that went off... Um, I could see some of the wall kind of chipped off. My pants exploded. And then this person screamed literally almost at the same time, which was crazy because it was the first bang. Um, But all this kind of happened so fast. So what I got later was they shot, it ricocheted off the wall, hit me, went through my leg, hit the wall, ricocheted and hit another person through their hand. The second, so now we're trying to find out where this bang is coming from. And I didn't know that I had been shot. I just knew my pants exploded. So this woman ran up to me and she said, I thought somebody threw an M80 bomb on me because it was close to 4th of July, uh, a big firecracker. And so she said, I think you got shot. And I said, I didn't get shot. So she opened up my legs, I'm opened up my pants and pulled out my pant leg. And just the meat was hanging over. It was just this big hole, like it was about like that big. And it was just the meat was hanging over and the blood was sizzling and the gene had burned into the skin and meat. So it, so this big hole is there. And so now I start panicking. My brother runs to the car and grabs a gun and now he's running around to see who's doing it. But we don't see anybody. And we're on an open street where if there was somebody shooting right there, you would see it. The next thing we hear is bang, another bang. And now it's so loud that I can't hear anything. And then the window across the street at the grocery store, this huge window just shatters and just breaks. So now we know the bullet is coming from behind us. What we found out, and so the bullet went across the street. It went through this woman's back, out her chest, and then into the side of the cashier and killed him. What I found out was they were shooting with a rifle through a hole in the wall behind us. And we were looking towards the street for the shooting, and uh, that was crazy. Okay, so you go to the hospital. Yes. You get patched up. Yes. And then you go to the house of the guy who shot you. Yes. Not knowing he shot that's me. the guy who shot you. Correct. How did you find out so, after that? Like, so this was, this was the Hollywood Unlocked skill investigator early on, I guess. You know, I can laugh at it now. Um, my friend, his name was Dare. Dare was a brother to a guy named Randy, who was a Northside Crip. I was cool with them and their whole family. We lived in the same apartment building together. 
we ended up moving, we ended up staying there, they ended up moving out. When I was on the phone with Dare, he was saying to me like, my brother, Marcel, and this other guy are all meeting, having a conversation about some shit. I don't know what's going on, but he was explaining to me like there was something going on with them. I didn't put two and two together until after I went to the house. And when I went to the house, Randy was like, what happened to you? I said, I got shot. He goes, well, where you get shot at? I got, I got shot at the car wash. And then he starts going off about, why did you do that? Why did you go to the car wash? You shouldn't have been there. Like, you should be hanging out on the streets like that, blah, blah, blah. Like, he seems like he's concerned. So I'm like, well, I was outside. It was with my brother, whatever. Fast forward, my brother tells me the reason why the shooting happened was because Randy, because my brother's friend had slapped Randy's friend's sister and they conspired to go back and shoot him. But since he was arrested for that, they wanted to kill my brother. Inadvertently shot me. So once I found out, I was like, okay, y'all all going to prison. And I went straight to the, I mean, right when they arrested him for it, cause you know, one person got murdered, two people got, three people got shot. Um, yeah, I mean, I went to court and I was like, yo, like, can we hurry up and get this underway? Cause I got lunch. He shot me, he was driving, this is what I heard. Cause I had already put it all together from talking to the brother. And I think Randy's out of prison now. Marcel is not getting out of prison. I don't know if the other guy's out of prison. Um, but uh, yeah, that was crazy. So he basically told on himself to you. He didn't say I shot you. Um, in fact, I mean, I've had people, I had people confront him in prison about it. And he said, oh no, it wasn't me. You know, I was in the car, this and whatever. But you know, uh, Randy and I were cool at the time. We're not cool now, of course, because I got shot. Um, but yeah, I mean, he was concerned because I think he really did like me as a friend, but also, you know, he was with that gang shit and they had to go and do what they had to do.